generosity in the hands of the foreigner, the, the, the health minister of St. Vincent's there is, is unique in the world. Um, I, I'm going to give my own perspective on, on, on Cuba's contributions to the world, focusing mainly on, on the health element, but how health has been actually a great vehicle um, to bringing equality and health throughout Latin America <coughs> and Africa and further afield. Obviously, a child can't go to school if he's not healthy, so health and education are kind of very uh, intermingled and, and very strongly linked. So I'm going to have my, my talk is going to be quick, but it's going to be in two parts. First of all, I'm just going to review very briefly where we are actually in the world at the moment, um, and then I have my own views on why Cuba actually um, is in the process of changing the way the last 500 years has gone. People who don't know Cuba, uh, people who kind of just rely on the mainstream media to get their information about Cuba, uh, will understand the truth of this comment by, by Gandhi. I mean, we only get the American international community in And um, as, uh, as Gandhi says, lies don't become truth because you repeat them very often, and nor do truth become lies because yeah, people refuse to see them. <coughs> this is where I see the world we live in today. Certainly, uh, the Dublin scene is probably well and graphically illustrated here. We have um, a greedy, appalling, egotistical society where the previous uh, film would not be entertained on any grounds uh, as a possibility. I'm just going to briefly review why, why we're here uh, and where we are. The life expectancy in Africa has gone down in the last uh, 20 years, and in certain parts of the world it's still very substandard. Also, poverty. Poverty is rampant and increasing in many parts of the world, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, where Cuba actually has huge public effects. The reason and this is a, a, a kind of a graphic example of it. And it's fairly hard when you see it in figures there. But, you know, if you look at the 13 billion on pet food in 1996 in Europe, a child is dying every two and a half seconds from hunger in the world today. And there's more than enough food being dumped every week to actually feed all these people. You get a quote from Gandhi, there's enough in the world for everyone's need, but not enough for some people's greed. Um, we've had 500 years of this stuff. Uh, I don't have to go through it for you. I mean, Peru in 1492, when it was discovered, had a civilization that was more advanced than, 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 than Europe itself. Um, we had seven, 500 years of unbelievable violence, theft, um, throughout the world. Um, you can read that yourselves. Um, this backed up with a very, uh, very um, useful propaganda sort of system. And it's amazing if you do travel around the United States, this, this little slide exactly tells you. It, it is an incredible achievement of the propaganda regime in the U.S. that the people of the U.S. have a totally different view uh, of what their actually government is doing around the world uh, at, from the reality. The general was more uh, the pretty accurate there. The reason we're in the situation today is based on this, well, 500 years, and then this comment from George Kennan. Now, the first part of this, this is a fairly long document, but he says that we have 6% of the world's population and 50% of its wealth. And then he goes on to say, you, you can read that, but um, <coughs> the last 40 or 50 years have certainly, uh, they have lived up to their, to their actual promise of what they were doing. Um, Again, they had various ways of doing it, and we can see the Venezuelan example very nicely illustrated there. Again, Venezuela will come into the picture, and I think Di will be talking in more detail about this pink tide effect, but it has been uh, very dramatic. Um, these are the guys who've called the shots for us in the international community for the last number of years. And when they fail, they liberate you. And this is actually a US uh, aircraft carrier on the way to liberate Iraq in, in uh, 2001. And this was actually Operation, and uh, they called it, first of all, they were going to call the Operation in Iraq uh, a, a crusade, but they were told that this was not a very popular thing. 
but the Shiite Muslims are the ratchet trying to support. So they call it enduring freedom. And you can see from these next set of slides how unendurable uh, freedom can actually be. They're pretty horrible. Uh, I'll uh, flash through them, but this is uh, what freedom's about. <coughs> this is a US soldier, actually, uh, Sabrina Harbin's name, very famous now. Unfortunately, we've uh, tied in with this thing fairly well. We've cooperated. We've let Shannon be used for our for the troops coming across. We've uh, cooperated with the rendition flights. And we have left our own social services and the uh, situation deteriorate to a situation that has been the aspiration for a lot of people. Now, why anyone want to be closer to Boston than Berlin? unless you're in the top 1% of the population, it's hard to understand. Berlin was voted City of the Year in the world last year. It's got a socialized Bismarck in health service, uh, good social security for everybody. And we've seen an accelerated growth <coughs> through Ireland in the last 15 years, which has resulted in the highest poverty gap in Europe, um, declining health performance, I mean, we know enough about that, with the highest imprisonment rate in Europe now per capita, and the lowest social spending. And this is where we are actually, as I see it, as, as a people within Ireland today. I don't know if anyone saw the Irish Times last Sunday, last Saturday, with a property supplement, and there was a guy called Caulfield on the front talking about his life. And this guy's main claim to fame before he became a, a, a property developer was that he captained the Wexford Under-21 football team, which is not like actually a, a pinnacle of, of, of achievement. But um, this guy was talking about his four Lamborghinis, his Ferrari, his penthouse in Paris, London, and things. And um, you know, he, he could fit into any of these except the school teacher. But that actually is how people's social work now in, the, in, 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 in Ireland and throughout the kind of Western world is actually looked at. I think this is a pretty nice little thing. That's actually God talking to Fidel Castro uh, um, about uh, the situation of the world. Um, so I think it is a, it's an interesting time. We've had the 500 years of, of unbridled capitalism. I do think uh, it is crashing down around everyone's ears at the moment. And I think it is a very interesting time uh, for countries like Cuba to emerge and actually to save us from, 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 from the disasters that we are in. There is another way, and this is the Cuban way. From my view, Cuba is the freest country in the world. This is not what you hear in the media. But this is the one country that has no debts to any superpower. They are totally free. And this comment by Fidel Castro when he was defending himself in 1953 um, would be pretty resonant with a lot of people in this room here because I think our own sort of patriotic fighters at the, at, the, at the turn of the last century, these words could easily be substituted for some, some of our own uh, guys who fought for independence. This is Cuban achievement. I'm sit down. This is Cuban achievement over the last 40 years. On the left side is a very famous <coughs> picture by a very famous photographer called Corda. And this is a little girl on the street corner in 1958 in Havana with a little piece of wood dressed in paper as, a, as, a, as our dog. These are school children on the way to school, not home from school, on the way to school, uh, a picture I took myself in 2000. And if that doesn't graphically illustrate what a concerned government can do for the people, I don't know what is. One thing that will strike any visitors to Cuba is the lack of Coca-Cola signs, the lack of Big Mac signs, the lack of all that sort of stuff. But you will see posters like this, which you will see nowhere else in the world. Two million children in the world sleep on the streets. None of them give. <coughs> what, what, what an achievement. <coughs> Everywhere you go, this is the sort of scenario. You remember the children in Iraq? The free children in Iraq? These are the enslaved children of, of Cuba. Focusing on the healthcare system, this is what they had achieved in 40 years. They had 6,000 doctors before the revolution. Most of those left and went to the United States, although certain Cuban doctors who were actually working in the United States at the time came back to Cuba because they liked the, the justice of the system. Infant mortality 60, which is a big parameter in healthcare, that is reduced to 70. You can see there yourself. The main, one of the huge 
contributions though, to world peace and development is, is Latin American School of Medicine, which I'm going to focus a little bit of detail on later on. Here is Cuba compared to the rest of the Caribbean. Uh, infant mortality rate there of 9.4, that was 1996. It is now the same as Dublin. It's less than seven. Half Washington, D.C., and obviously significantly better than any country in the region. This is the American Association of World Health comments on Cuba in 1993, developed an exemplary national health system which provides comprehensive, accessible health care to the entire population without charge. The only country in the world that really achieves that. And it has even got into the paper or newspaper of record, as they like to call themselves. So if it's in there, everything is true. But um, healthcare asks Cuba. This is from the New York Times, January 12, 2005. And um, yes, it is a hard to entrench in fact. But there are parts of the United States where the health service and the social service are worse than Central Africa. And it's not confined to great humanity and great. Uh, personal ability and technical ability, the actual science of Cuban medicine is exemplary. They have developed vaccines that we still don't have in this part of the world, essentially because of the blockade. They developed in 1987 a vaccine against meningococcal B, which kills thousands of children around the world, except in the Latin American world where Cuba can actually sell or give away its vaccine. This, this vaccine is blocked uh, in Europe and the United States. But the main thing I want to focus on today is this absolute miracle of a school based in Havana. Every time I go to Cuba, I visit this place. If you ever go to Cuba, you'll have to go and see it. It just is unbelievable. In 1999, after Hurricane Mitch, Raul Castro donated this place, which was a naval academy. This is an axis of evil, a terrorist country, a warlike country. They turned their naval academy into an international medical school, where they accepted, have accepted students from around the world, including the United States. Now, the United States flag is in the middle there because it went alphabetically, starting with Argentina on the actual far left there. It's not for any other reason going there. This is the makeup of the school, I don't know if you can read it there, but anyway, to date, if 7,000 students enroll there, they come for a six-year program, they get everything, they get their food, their accommodation, uh, all their sports, their medical education, their books, everything free of charge. The only commitment the student makes is that he returns to his native country and practices medicine when he graduates. It's a worldwide program, but essentially focuses on Latin America and Africa. And the students, as you can see from this little uh, map of El Salvador, are not taken to the big cities where the indigenous doctors, generally speaking, if you go to Latin America, if you go to Venezuela, the locally produced doctors live in Caracas and they practice private medicine. The countryside is actually showed up by usually Cuban doctors in these places. But Cuba picks students from all over, and these are from very rural areas, and these kids generally go back to where they came from. The country as a whole, Cuba, is not a wealthy country, but there is no poverty as such, and there's certainly no poverty of spirit, because this school is universally supported by the people of Cuba. And I think Noel Carrillo would, 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 would endorse that statement. They actually, everyone, and you see these signs on the side of the road, congratulating the graduating class. This is last year's class. And I just got through the slides of the paper, but it's so, it's so spectacular to go. These are from all different countries throughout Latin America. Thanking Cuba, Ho Chi Minh City, not in Latin America, but Vietnam. But it's, 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 it's really a miracle. And this is particularly interesting. This is a, and unfortunately, I couldn't get it on the slide, but it's from the parents, the United States parents of the 2007 graduates of the Latin American School. And they just say how proud they are that their children have graduated. They thank Fidel Castro <coughs> uh, and the Cuban people for their generosity uh, in doing this fantastic uh, thing. It's, a, it's wonderful to walk around this place. You see all these different signs. You see medical students like you will not see in this part of the world. These kids are so happy 
to be getting a medical education. They are so happy with the concept that they will go back and actually improve the quality of life for their own neighbours. And the, you, you, can, you can see, you know, you don't, you don't see this in, 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 in a European, Irish, uh, English medical school. Young people so enthusiastic and so happy to be in the place. And it's really international. This is another sign you see all over the place in Cuba. Ideas are stronger than nuclear weapons, and I think it certainly is the case. We've seen this one already, and ideas have actually replaced the IMF in Latin America, which has been one of Cuba's great, great achievements, because that was a real instrument of terror to have to there. This is probably one of the major turning points, in my opinion, in Latin America, and this has been inspired by Cuba. And the picture on the right, I think, is one of the most inspiring photographs I've ever seen. This little woman confronting an army ejected Bechtel Corporation out of Bolivia and started, this is a place called Cochabamba, which is now president, the, the site of the actual president, or the, uh, the parliament for the new union of Latin American states. So thanks to Cuba, Cuba has essentially, I think, liberated Latin America. It has... And, and, and the United States understood absolutely <coughs> perfectly the huge threat that Cuba was to the region. The threat of a good example, the threat of a government who looked after its own people. Chile tried to do a similar thing in 1973 and it was violently suppressed. However, Venezuela have broken the mold. The war in Iraq, paradoxically, while not liberating Iraq, has liberated through the price of oil going through the roof, has actually allowed the, the, the Venezuelan government, Chavez's government, to actually bankroll Banco Sur, which has put the IMF out of business. Less than 1% of their loans now go to Latin America. 20 years ago, it was 80%. And it was the instrument of actually uh, using, uh, introducing American policies throughout the region. They're gone. But perhaps the most significant thing is the development of, uh, 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 of units here, which I think Dahi is going to talk about. This group of people, which is really a United Nations, an EU of, 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 of Latin American states, have achieved wondrous things already. The most spectacular, in my opinion, being the meeting last week where Michel Bachelet, the Chilean president of UNICEF at the moment, had a meeting of all the presidents of Latin America, including the president of Colombia, which is essentially the Israel of, 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 of Latin America. And they unanimously supported Morales' election, Morales' policies, and his ejection of the US ambassador from the country. So for me, using medicine as a vehicle for his own people to get them healthy, they're educated, and to be generous throughout the world, uh, Fidel Castro, has more than absolved himself. And in my opinion, will rank as one of the greatest leaders of the modern times. Uh, and most great leaders have done great things for their own people. Fidel Castro has been a citizen of the world. His policies, his government, and his Cuban people have endorsed these policies. And I believe that this sort of clash of cultures, a clash of uh, ideologies where 500 years of unbridled capitalism are, I believe, coming to an end. I think Cuba, and I think already throughout the world, I mean, you know, the third world is 80% of the world. Cuba is the superpower in most of these countries. I mean, there's a little film there on, on Pakistan. You talk to Pakistani doctors working in Dublin. They talk about the Cuban doctors who went to Pakistan, who worked in the mountains, who the girls wore. Islamic dress. I mean, they, they culturally mixed and uh, they had no had no problems, and uh, and were the only people really who, who actually helped out. You talk to the Irish Army about the hurricane in Honduras. They talk about the Cuban doctors. You, you, anywhere you go, it's Cuban doctors. In Africa, the people coming back from Africa, Irish priests and ones, in that Cuban doctor there. So I think Cuba will have a huge role to play in, 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 in the new civilization that <coughs> is on the way. And they've done it through the generosity of their people and through their commitment to uh, making the world a better place. Thank you.